Hey everybody, it's Zach here. Welcome back to Clapperboard, where I'll be doing another movie review. This time, I'm going to be reviewing IT Chapter 2. IT Chapter 2 is the highly anticipated sequel to the 2017 horror movie IT, and is based off of the second half of the very famous 1986 book, by Stephen King. It's directed by Andy Muschietti and it stars Bill Skarsgård, James McAvoy, Jessica Chastain, Bill Hader, Asaya Mustafa, Jay Ryan, James Ransone, and Andy Bean. It once again revolves around the members of the Losers Club, who are now fully grown adults living lives of their own, until they get a phone call from one of their own in Derry, revealing that the evil entity known as It still isn't quite dead yet bringing them back to their hometown to stop Pennywise once and for all. Now, I actually remember when the first It movie came out back in 2017. Um, I remember when all the trailers were coming out on YouTube. I remember when the film was released. I remember its reception. Um, it was huge. Like, the movie was an event. Everybody was hyped. Everybody was talking about it. Um, you know, even people who didn't want to see it had seen the trailers and everything, and they were saying it looked terrifying, and... Um, it, it, this movie was this movie was highly anticipated. It's chapter two was highly anticipated. Um, especially I was highly anticipating it. I'd seen the first movie. I'd actually read the book by Stephen King. I've I've read the original novel. It's an amazing book. I love it. Overall, I went into this movie. I went into the theater. It was packed. There were so many people there. Um, all the lights went down. It went dark, and the the creepy music, Oranges and Lemons, the song that was used as sort of Pennywise's theme came up. And oh my goodness, w watching a horror movie in theatres, uh, it, 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 honestly, I've watched a lot of horror movies before, but I've, I've never watched a horror movie in theatres. So this was an experience, let me tell you. Watching this movie was an experience. All the same though, it's chapter two. I don't think that this movie is as good as the first movie. Don't get me wrong, I liked it. In fact, I really liked it. I had a blast, but there are a lot of flaws. There are a lot of things that I didn't like about the movie. Along with a lot of great things in this movie, I do think there are a lot of really wonderful things that made this movie a worthwhile experience. And I would I would recommend this movie. I would recommend you, you guys checking this movie out. I liked it. But all the same, I do feel that there are a lot of things, a lot of flaws, a lot of little things that they could have improved on, some not that little, that could have made this film better. But ultimately, I don't think this is as good as the first movie. Still pretty damn good, but overall, I do have a few issues with it that I will touch on. Now, I'll start off by just saying that I'm not really going to be talking about the more technical aspects of the movie, like um, the overall design of the movie, the costumes, the cinematography, visual effects, lighting, any, any of that sort of stuff, or the musical score. I'm not going to talk about any of that sort of stuff in this review, because if you've seen the first It movie, you know that that stuff's pretty much flawless. I mean, it's a very good-looking movie. It's very well-made technically, so I'm not really going to address any of that sort of stuff. Now, one of the things that is both a real good thing about this movie and also a not so good thing about this movie is its faithfulness or at least it, it, it trying to stay as faithful to the novel as possible because unlike the first it movie which really took a lot of deviances from the novel for the better in my opinion this movie on the other hand really even though it changes stuff don't get me wrong and the changes that it does make i think were certainly warranted um it, this movie is very faithful to the novel in terms of a lot of the stuff you see in there, which is good. I mean, it's good to see, like, a novel being translated so faithfully to the screen. But ultimately, at the end of the day, one of the things that it does do is it really drags out the movie quite a lot. And that is one of the things that a lot of people have been highlighting as a negative of the film. And it's honestly one of the things that I think really... It didn't kill the experience, but it really dragged it down for me was... Oh my god, it is a bloody long movie. It, it's like, I think it, it's around about three hours long, maybe even over. It really did not need to be. It could have been a lot shorter. They could have cut down a lot of scenes. The act that I thought that really needed to be edited down was the middle act, was the, the, the middle second act of the movie, where basically what happens is the characters, the, the Losers Club, the members of the Losers Club, they basically go around the town of Derry, to find little elements of their childhood. This act really could have been cut down. Because really, at the end of the day, it doesn't add an awful lot to the movie. It, re it honestly doesn't. The majority of it consists of them mostly just going around to old places. There's a lot of flashbacks to their youth and stuff like that. There's a lot of flashbacks to their childhood. But other than that, it mostly just 
culminates in an encounter with Pennywise. They find a little element from their childhood which they need as a sort of plot device. But other than that, there really isn't an awful lot to this middle act. It's basically just padding. It turned the movie, at least the middle act of the movie, into a little bit of a slog. It, it was quite slow. And what I feel they, they should have extended was the first act. The first act showing the lives of the Losers Club. They could have shown more of Pennywise terrorising Derry, and they could have shown us more of them meeting one another again. Because honestly, like, when I watched that first scene in the, the restaurant of the Losers Club coming back together and meeting up once again, it really felt a bit rushed, you know? It didn't flow as well as I would have liked to. It, it, was, it was shown through this big montage, it was shown through this big montage of them laughing and doing stupid things at the dinner table and stuff like that. And don't get me wrong, I, I honestly thought that a lot of the scenes with the Losers Club were some of the best things in the movie, but ultimately that is the stuff that could have been really fleshed out and really extended. The middle act could have been severely cut down and it would have really fixed a lot of the pacing issues with the movie. And adding on from that, like I'll, I'll get onto the overall like casting in a minute of, of the Losers Club, but overall that first scene in the restaurant, it, because it was shown through this really fast paced montage of the characters laughing and behaving in their, in their old ways and stuff like that and getting to meet one another, as a result, it's not until later in the movie do we really get a sense of chemistry between these actors. And ultimately, I feel like if they had really extended that scene, we could have felt a much more, at least in that first scene, a much more natural connection between those guys. Another one of the issues I had with this was you never really got to see any sense of scale to the terror and, you know, magnitude of Pennywise's wrath over Derry in this one. Because I, one of the things I remember in the first movie was constantly seeing, you know, the missing posters, the curfew, hearing about the curfews and stuff. So many kids, you know, going missing and stuff like that. In this movie, I believe you only really get to see two scenes of Pennywise actually luring kids into, you know, his traps and stuff like that, and eventually drawing them closer and enticing them with his, you know, innocent charm and then attacking them at the last moment, you know. And honestly, like, those were some of the scariest scenes in the movie, seeing Pennywise luring kids closer and Pennywise stalking kids and then eventually attacking them and killing them. And and again, that was honestly, in the first movie, the scene with, with um, Georgie and the drain and the little boat, that is honestly one of the scariest scenes in these two movies put together. That first scene in the first movie is traumatizing. Like, you should not show that scene to a little kid because it will mess them up for life. I guarantee you that. You never really get to see any of that scale of terror again. It's basically just two scenes. And that's unfortunate because those scenes with him are some of the scariest in the movie. Because a lot of the scenes where Pennywise is present, he's doing a lot of illusions and a lot of crazy things to them, to the characters' minds and stuff like that, and he's resurrecting characters from the first movie who were supposed to be dead and stuff like that. And uh, honestly, a lot of those scenes with the monstrous, deformed, you know, creepy entities came off as a little goofy, and one of the key scenes, in my opinion, which displayed this was the scene with Beverly going into her father's apartment. And that scene started off really well. It started off really well, and, you know, you all saw it from, like, the first trailer and stuff with that old woman and, you know, how she's actually revealed to be Pennywise in disguise and stuff like that. You know, that scene started off really, really well, but when the woman actually transforms into the monster and stuff like that, and it's not in Pennywise's form, it's in, like, a the, this, like, massive towering, deformed, half-naked old lady and stuff like that. And it's... A lot of those scenes with the with the monstrous entities came off as, honestly, just quite goofy and unintentionally funny at moments. And you'll have to watch the movie to see what I mean. But honestly, just the way they scampered forward and, you know, a lot of the, the creepy elements to their characters, which were supposed to come off as, like, gruesome or unsettling or uncanny, honestly just came off as kind of funny, in my opinion. And I honestly feel like it would have been a bit better if they had gone down a far more s subtle route and shown a lot less of the the monsters and stuff like that, and it honestly gone more or less for Pennywise in his clown shape, showing him hidden in shadows and stuff like that. Because honestly, you really don't get to see an awful lot of 
Pennywise himself, like Bill Skarsgård in this movie. You get to see a lot of the monsters that he creates as, like, illusions and stuff like that, but you don't get to see an awful lot of him, at least in the first two acts of the movie. A lot of the scares weren't as terrifying and intense as they were in the first movie, because the, the first movie really utilised music and it really utilised pacing and editing to really convey those scares, as well as having, you know, the horrific makeup and, and you know, Bill Skarsgård's very creepy performance as Pennywise. This movie doesn't really do that. It doesn't utilise, you know, it doesn't utilise tension well enough. It doesn't utilise, when, when there is jump scares, it doesn't utilise that well enough. It just kind of has these moments where the camera will pan to the scary thing and there will be this explosion of sound and music. And that's kind of the majority of the scares and stuff like that. And honestly, it would have really been nicer if they had utilised music and editing and just tension way more because, like, that that that's one of the worst things about modern horror movies is just the constant uses of jump scares and just really lazy filmmaking techniques. And honestly, like, don't get me wrong, I think this movie is better than the majority of horror movies out there these days. But honestly... I feel like they could have made it a little bit scarier and they could have made it a little bit more intense than the first movie. It all made it as intense, but it honestly just wasn't in my opinion. Now that I'm on the topic of Pennywise, I would also like to address that the scene in which, you know, Bill and Mike have a vision of Pennywise coming down to Earth and, and displaying his true form, his much more alien form, the scene with the, you know, the asteroid coming down and hitting Derry, um, you know, millions of years ago, and then we actually get to see... Pennywise's true form and stuff like that scene felt like it was out of a different movie it felt like it was more out of like an ancient Egyptian kind of movie and sort of like the designs and stuff like that and I get that you know Pennywise's true form arrived on earth like millions of years ago and stuff like that in the movie and everything like that but I honestly felt like it could have been again much more subtle and less like in your face and everything and just the designs and stuff like that it honestly felt like it wasn't from like a horror movie in the vein of you know it it felt like it was more or less in the vein of one of those like ancient egyptian kind of movies like it made me think of some of the stuff from like a movie and i haven't seen this movie but i've seen little clips from it it looked like a dark like much more edgy version of gods of egypt or something like that and another one of the things that really irked me about the whole um stuff that they showed with pennywise was they have little inklings of Pennywise's origins and stuff like that. They have little inklings, you know, you know, when Beverly goes into the old lady's house and stuff like that, and she says, what was it, like, something like, my grandfather joined the circus and stuff like that, and then the camera cuts to a picture of Bill Skarsgård, who's the actor who plays Pennywise, in a different sort of makeup and stuff, and he's smiling, you know, his classic sinister Pennywise smile, and it's clearly, that's clearly like Pennywise before he became you know, you know, a, you know, a clown and stuff like that. But I really wanted to know more of the origins of Pennywise and everything because there are little moments where you get to see Pennywise before, he, you know, he became a clown and stuff like that. You get to see Bill Skarsgård without clown makeup on. And, I mean, on one hand, that is one of the things that is great about horror movies because there are so many questions and so many unanswered, you know riddles and everything like that and that's what makes it so scary and you know fascinating but one of the things that's really getting me a little concerned is that the filmmakers are actually saying we can make a Pennywise Origins movie they're, they're considering making more they're not going to make an It Chapter 3 but they're considering making movies about Pennywise and about his origins and everything like that and it's like no I don't want to see another movie I, I if you're going to address Pennywise's origins like, first off, you don't have to address Pennywise's origins at all. But if you're going to, and if you're going to hint at it like they did in this movie, don't make a movie about it. Don't make a whole movie about it, because that's going to completely kill all the mystery and everything like that. You can show little bits and pieces of it in this movie, but don't show all of it in another movie. We don't need it. I wanted to see more of Pennywise's origins, don't get me wrong, but I would have liked to have seen it in this movie, not in an entire movie where all of the stuff all of the mysteries will be given away. So that was a missed opportunity. I feel like if they were going to hint at Pennywise's origins, they could have displayed, I, they could have, they could have explored it way more in this movie. And no, I don't think I want another movie in this universe. This, this is it. This is it. You know, pun intended. But th this is, this is the, this is, you know, it's chapter two. This is the final part of the adaption of the book. 
There are no more books in this universe, so please don't make another movie. Also, another incredible missed opportunity for me in this movie was the character of Henry Bowers, you know, the, 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 the bully character in the first movie, the, the bully who terrorised the Losers Club and stuff like that. Now, in this movie, he starts off in, like, a mental institution, and then he's freed by Pennywise, and he, he, he hunts the members of the Losers Club and stuff like that. Like, I thought this was an incredible missed opportunity because I swear that he gets, like, around about five minutes of screen time in this movie, and then he dies, and I know that, you know, in the original book, that's pretty much what happens. He kind of hunts the Losers Club for a while, he hunts members of them, he gets into a fight, and then he dies. But all the same, if you're going to have him reoccur in this movie, and, you know, I was honestly, because in the, in the first movie, at the end of the first movie, he's shown plummeting down a well, presumably to his death. You know, I honestly thought, you know, a fall down a well that large, you know, he's got to be dead. But if you're going to honestly bring him back for this movie, you've got to really utilise him. Because I thought that the actor, I don't know his name, I'm sorry, but I thought that the actor who did a fantastic job playing his, you know, crazy you know, out of it state of mind, you know, I thought he did a great job conveying the really insane level that the character's mind is at, and when you, when you cast an actor like that, who really brought, clearly brought us all to it, and when you bring back a character like that after apparently killing him off in the first movie, even though he isn't killed off in the book, like, honestly, you've got to really utilize him, and seriously, like, five minutes of screen time, missed opportunity, if you ask me. Um, and now, a bit of a spoiler warning here, I'm going to address the ending. I overall thought that the overall final battle with Pennywise was a little bit underwhelming. I wish that Pennywise's death had been shown in a far more subtle way. I wish they just had Pennywise, like, disappear or crumble into ash or something like that. I really wish they hadn't shown him, like, deflating and cowering in front of the Losers Club and stuff like that. I really wish they hadn't shown it in that graphic detail because it kind of, again, like, it took away some of the, the, the more eerie, you know, aspects around Pennywise and some of the more creepy elements of the character. And I really wish it had been shown far more subtly. Or, or at least made it way more satisfying. Because for me, and again, spoiler warning, the emotional climax for the finale, for me, was actually the death of Eddie, the character of Eddie Kasbrack. I cried. I'm not, I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit this. I cried at Eddie's death. Um, it was really, it was really sad. And um, that, for me, was honestly the emotional climax of the scene. Not the death of Pennywise, but the death of one of these characters that you know we've grown to care about over the course of the first movie you know when you think back to how they were as kids and over the course of this movie when we get to know the characters an awful lot and get to get to sort of you know get a feel for like the adult counterparts and honestly that that for me was the emotional climax and emotional you know conclusion of the finale so it probably sounds like from an awful lot of these flaws and issues I have with the movie that it's not a good movie and it's quite a bad movie. No, I would like to stress that it, Chapter 2 is not a bad movie, but those are just things that really stuck out to me as being problematic and as dragging down the movie for me. That being said, there's a lot of really great things in this movie. There's a lot of really amazing stuff, in fact. There's clearly been a lot of effort put into this movie. There's clearly been a lot of passion put into this movie. And honestly, even though at times it really isn't all that scary, I would honestly consider this to be better than an awful lot of horror movies that are coming out right now. Because an awful lot of horror movies are clearly being very lazily put together. This movie is not being lazily put together. This movie has clearly had a lot of hard work put into it, and it's got a real soul to it. It's got a real passion and real, you know, heart to it that I really love. And one of the things that I hear a lot of people say about the first It movie is that 
they didn't like it because it wasn't scary enough and stuff like that. And honestly, like, as somebody who's read the book, if you're one of those people who doesn't think that the movie was scary enough, honestly, to me, you really don't get the point of the movie. You really don't understand it. Because if you read the book, if you have read the book, and if you if you understand the first movie and this, also the second movie, it's not about Pennywise. It's not about the clown. It's not about the scary stuff. It's about the Losers Club. And that is an awful lot of what Stephen King's novels have to deal with. A lot of Stephen King's books deal with themes of childhood and growing up and maturing into adulthood. The Losers Club is the heart of these two movies, and it's the heart of the book as well. You know, the final lines of this movie are something along the lines of we're losers and we always will be or something like that. That uh, that was something like the final line in this movie. It's not about Pennywise. It's not about the scary stuff. It's about the characters and their relationships and their and their ability to mature from children to adults. That is what these movies are about. And if you're one of these people who says that these movies are bad because they're not scary enough, like, you clearly haven't read the book, first off. You clearly haven't read the book, and you just don't get it, and you never have. That's just my opinion, at least. There are an awful lot of really great things about this movie, and the acting was one of them. Now, like, the acting in the first movie was also pretty great, but the adult counterparts of the children in the Losers Club, they chose them so well. Like, they actually look like grown-up versions of the kids who played them about two years ago. It really was amazing. You know, I, I was a bit concerned about Jessica Chastain as Beverly Marsh, because, like... Jessica Chastain, I couldn't really see her very much as, you know, an adult version of Beverly. You know, I'd seen Jessica Chastain in Interstellar, and, you know, I really just didn't see her as this character, but she did a pretty great job of it. I thought she did really well. Um, both James McVoy um, and uh, Jay Ray, who play uh, Bill Denver and Ben Hanscom, are actually not American. Um, James McVoy is Scottish, which I had no idea. Uh, I had no idea about that. And um, Jay Ray is actually a New Zealander who's from my home country. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, I'm from New Zealand. Um, so I actually had no idea that one of the actors from the Losers Club was from my home country. Um, it's amazing that I didn't know until now. So that was honestly really surprising. And again, after that first, you know, montage scene where I really didn't get a sense of their relationships because it felt awfully rushed, eventually they did grow really great chemistry between one another and they really did manage to, you know, slide off one another out of their banter and stuff like that. And I really liked it. I thought, again, I thought The Losers Club was one of the highlights of the movie. Um, and really just brought it home to me. One of the things that a lot of people did address about this movie in saying that it was one of the highlights of the movies was the um, actor Bill Hader, who played um, Richie Tozier. Um, and he did a great job. I would just like to point out, he did a really great job playing him. And um, one of the things that a lot of people like to highlight is how he really does steal the scenes and stuff like that, and especially the humour. This is actually, for a horror movie, this is a really funny movie. Um, there's a lot of jokes, a lot of great one-liners and quips, and honestly, sometimes it may have been a little bit too much. There were a lot of humorous one-liners and humorous quips that occurred in some of the more intense scenes, and sometimes, you know, you maybe, maybe that wasn't needed. Maybe you could have just let the scenes play out as the intense, scary, horror-filled moments as they were and not had any humour in it. That being said, it kept this movie really fun, you know, and that's one of the things that a lot of people, you know, like to say is that, you know, sometimes movies are very self-serious and, you know, they don't have a, a sense of self-awareness to them. They're very serious, very poker-faced about everything, and it ultimately kills the fun. This movie, because it, even though there's really horrific stuff happening, it still has a sense of humour about things. It still has a sense of fun, um, especially through the character of Richie Tozier. He's very funny. Bill Hader, again, I totally agree with the reviews and stuff. He does steal the scenes. But there's also wonderful banter between the, the, the members of the Losers Club. And it really, even though this film is, has got horrible things in it with Pennywise and everything like that, you know, killing kids and everything... It still keeps this movie fun and enjoyable and entertaining, and that is one thing that I really did like about this movie. It's also pretty clear to me that the, the, the filmmakers behind these movies have actually planned out both it, 
you know, the first one and it chapter two because there's, there's a lot of reoccurring imagery and there's a lot of reoccurring themes and locations that were, were seen in the first movie but have sort of been interlinked in this movie. There's a lot of scenes where you can see that the filmmakers have, have considered to, to themselves, you know, hmm, how can we sort of link that scene from the first movie into this scene from the second movie and how can we sort of you know, bridge the development of the characters and of the locations from the first movie to this movie, and I really liked how they did that. You know, it's clear to me that the the filmmakers have a plan. They clearly knew what they were doing when they made the first movie, and they knew how it would play into the second movie in terms of reoccurring moments and reoccurring, you know, situations and stuff like that. And I really liked that, because, like, if we were going to address, you know, stuff which doesn't have a plan, I mean... The new Star Wars trilogy with Disney, you know, it's clear that those guys don't have a plan. It's clear that Disney and, you know, all of the filmmakers behind th this new Star Wars trilogy, it's clear that they don't have a plan. So I'm really glad that they really have set everything up and made sure that r there are a lot of reoccurring stuff which link the two movies together instead of making them feel really disjointed. Because, yes, this movie does feel like a very fluid continuation from the first one. It does feel like a solid sequel and a solid follow-up, despite its flaws. And I really liked how it, it, di it didn't change too many things. It, it still felt, even though it's set in a completely different time period to the first movie the first movie was set in the 80s this one is set in you know current day um it still really felt like a, a, a fluid continuation and you really got to see recognizable aspects of the first movie translate into this one and it's clear that the filmmakers to me know what they're doing also another thing that i noticed about this movie um stephen king has a cameo uh the author of the original book which is somewhere back there on my shelf. The author of the of the the actual novel has a has a cameo in this movie. Um he's the he's the owner of the shop in which uh Bill buys his bike from. I immediately just saw that and I'm like, "Oh my god, that's Stephen King. I I recognize that guy. Isn't he the author, you know, the guy who's kind of responsible for all this because let's face it, if the book hadn't been published, uh the movie would have these movies would have never been made." So, you know, that was really funny. I was just like, "That's Stephen King." What are the chances, you know? That was that was funny. I really liked that cameo. I thought that was great. Also, a lot of the changes that they that they actually made to the movie in terms of how it how it's somewhat deviated from the source material because as I said before, this is relatively faithful to the book. It's it follows it quite closely and everything and I would consider it to be a very faithful adaptation um for better or for worse, but one of the changes that they did make, and there were several changes that they made, I feel that the changes they made were for the better, and one of them was that Beverly has actually had a dream, because Beverly, you'll remember in the first film how she's sort of like put into this kind of like hypnotized coma by Pennywise, and one of the things that Beverly says in the movie is that she actually um, ha has had visions of, you know, her and the other members of the Losers Club dying horribly if they don't come back, you know, 27 years later to Derry, which um, I thought that, I don't believe that was in the book. I don't believe that particular plot line was in the book, and I think the filmmakers made it up for the movie. But to me, that that's a great change. It honestly makes sense to me, because, you know, why would ultimately the members of the Losers Club, why would they want to stay at Derry? You know, they clearly went through very traumatic experiences in this town in terms of Pennywise and in terms of their experiences with the bullies and stuff like that. Why would they want to remain in Derry? Why would they want to face Pennywise once again? And, you know, at, at the end of the day, they are forced... At the end of the day, the filmmakers, and I believe they... Like I said, I believe they invented this for the movie. They are forced to stay there because if they don't, they'll die. I thought that was really clever. I really liked that... Um, invention that 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 film and in, filmmaker invented plot device to get them to stay there i thought that was really clever and again that really does convince me that the filmmakers have a plan and they know what they're doing because why else would they have had beverly get hypnotized you know in the first movie if they weren't gonna include that plot line of beverly seeing them dying horribly and realizing that that's what's gonna happen if they don't stay in Derry and encounter pennywise once again again just goes to show that these guys know what they're doing. Again, among other aspects that I really did like about this movie that I thought were really great, um, the scenes with Pennywise, um, when he's stalking, you know, little kids and then eventually, you know, 
enticing them closer and then eventually killing them just like in the first movie they're among the scariest scenes in the movie especially the one with the little girl and um you really get to see how pennywise works you know even though he's in the shadows and the lighting and everything is really creepy on him it, it's very much like the scene with the um uh, with georgie in the boat in the first movie in terms of how he entices the little girl closer and he says you know like hello, you know, can I be your friend and stuff like that? And the girl just turns around and goes like, no, I don't want to be your friend, you're terrifying. And then Bill Skarsgård, who again is very creepy as Pennywise. Bill Skarsgård is an amazing actor. He, he's very talented in this sort of creepy, you know, sometimes innocent but slightly sinister Pennywise who eventually becomes very monstrous when the children come closer. You know, Bill Skarsgård is great. And um, it's very interesting to see how Pennywise starts fake crying and he's saying you know oh no one wants to hang out with me because i look so scary and you know then the girl starts to go oh never mind i can be your friend and then pennywise starts to like en entice her closer and then he attacks her and kills her and it, it's those are some of the scariest scenes in these movies guys and i i again i just really wish they had shown much more of that in these in, in this in this particular one and another one of the things that i appreciated about this movie and also the first movie in comparison with a lot of movies from the american film industry nowadays is this movie is brutal like it does not it does not censor violence this movie does not cut away at the last minute it doesn't become this pg-13 like oh you know kids can come and see this it's scary but it's not scary to the point where kids will be terrified you know come 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 on kiddies you know watch a pg-13 bloodless gutless you know horror movie no this movie shows kids getting hurt and same with the first movie it shows horrible things happening there's a lot of very graphic violence there's some quite shocking violence especially in the opening the the opening act of the movie with um Poor Beverly Marsh, um, at the hands of her abusive husband, she gets beaten up, and uh, it's horrible. It's horrible. There's a lot of gruesome stuff that happens in this movie. They don't shy away from showing a lot of graphic stuff. They don't shy away from, you know, kid horrible things happening to kids. And honestly, like, I have a lot of respect for movies like that because there is an awful lot of censorship and just overall just, you know, gutless gutless movies nowadays that don't want to show horrible things happening they cut away at the last minute they they have characters getting shot but you don't see any blood and everything you have people getting stabbed but again no blood is shown whatsoever and i'm really fed up with that and honestly i really like and i really respect that this movie showed lots of blood and lots of gruesome violence and i i really i it's really refreshing to seeing a movie that doesn't go down the PG-13 route and actually has a bit of balls to it and actually does go out there and say, you know what, horrible things are happening in this movie and you know what, you're going to have to deal with it. So again, like, I, I'm, I'm not saying that violence is good or anything like that, but again, I'm just, I'm just getting really irritated with movies that don't want to show that don't want to go balls to the wall and show horrible things happening. So, you know what, this movie, for what it's worth, it's really graphic, It's it shows horrible things happening, and I give it respect for that. In conclusion, I thought that It Chapter 2 was a flawed but really enjoyable sequel to the original 2017 film. Um, I thought there were a lot of things that this movie did well. I thought it was creepy enough, I thought that the acting was wonderful, I thought that the chemistry between the members of the Losers Club, while initially getting off to a rocky start, really got there. I really loved the way that, j I mean, the movie is technically pretty flawless. Um, ultimately, I enjoyed the movie. It's just unfortunate that some of the scares aren't as meaty as the first movie, um, and they don't really utilize a lot of the scenes with Pennywise well enough, and ultimately, it led to a bit of an underwhelming finale for me, um, and also the pacing really could have been worked on, and it was flaws like that that really did drag down this movie a bit for me, and it's not a bad movie. I would recommend you checking out this movie. I, I think you'll enjoy it. It's just, as a, as a, a film, it could be better, um, especially considering uh, it's a follow-up to a, a movie which I really enjoyed. I really liked the first movie, um, and it's it's also an adaption of an incredibly successful book. But overall, I wouldn't say it's bad at all. I would say check it out. It's enjoyable. It's, it's got great things in it, and I think people will appreciate it. And, but, you know, I've seen the reactions. They are appreciating it for that. So I would recommend you guys checking out this film. It's good. It's just not perfect, unfortunately. 
I would overall give It Chapter 2 a 3.5 out of 5. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, as your opinions really mean a lot to me. I'll hopefully see you in another video very soon. Until then though, take care. Thank <laughs> you.